I want to just tell you about manifestation because it's effortless. It's light and it's effortless. There's no effort involved when you're fighting, when you're pushing, you don't believe that you have what you're wanting. It's not going to come. You're going to keep creating, not having it because you're creating all the time. So you're either manifesting it or you're creating, not manifesting it or the absence of it. So manifestation is like, I once used to think that it's as light as a feather. So there's this effort effortless feeling that you have inside of you when you want to manifest. It's just like this feeling of peace and happiness and you just know that it's going to come and you know that a single thought that you focus on will manifest. You have all power to manifest whatever you want, all power. And so if you don't believe in the power that you have, then you're going to really push and push and pull and fight. Need motivation? Hey, it's Evan Carmichael and I make these videos because in my first business, I quit on my business partner. I was making 300 bucks a month and I didn't have the motivation to keep going. And the thing that got me through was studying the stories of entrepreneurs who've had massive success. And I hope that in sharing these stories with you, you find a motivation to keep going. And if I'm being honest, I still need the stories for myself today too. So today let's learn from one of the best, Rhonda Byrne and my take on her top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. Rule number two, discover who you truly are. Everybody has regrets, everybody. But when you're free, you don't regret anything anymore. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I don't regret anything because you realize that everything led you to the place of being free. And that's what everything in your life is leading you right now to the place of you being free and realizing your incredible true nature. So everybody has also experienced betrayal of trust, right? I shall have multiple times over. Really good at attracting that. Everybody's been burnt. But life is not about those circumstances. Life is about how you respond to those situations. And, you know, just it's so important that you don't blame anybody and you don't blame yourself. Because I think a lot of the time if we've suffered a betrayal, deep down we're kind of be we're, we're blaming ourselves for having fallen for it, for not having seen it. You know, and so right at the root of it all, we're kind of, we're blaming the other person, but really we're blaming ourselves. Don't blame. Don't blame anyone. You just attract more circumstances where you will blame. So don't blame anybody. Don't blame yourself. This was an experience that you had to have. Believe me, I've had them. I am sure most of the people out there have had all of those experiences too. It's no big deal. Guess what? It's part of life. It's okay. Um... So, and especially, don't believe any thoughts from now on that have anything to do with that situation because, once again, it's only the thoughts that are regurgitating it. It's If you have suffered some kind of betrayal or an unjust situation, it's something in the past, right? It's not here right now. It's something in the past. And so just leave it. It's gone. Just let it go into the past and don't bring it into your life now. And just be like, oh, if you can be fresh, you know, fresh, fresh of all of that baggage, fresh of all of those, those burdens that are in your mind, just be fresh and clear, totally clear. So one of the things that I found, if you, if you want to just... Um, sort of relax a little bit. And you know what? I discovered this in the dentist chair <laughs> and I was having dental work done and I noticed that I was like clenching, like I had my hands on the chair and I noticed that I was clenching. Oh, my God. And I'm like, look, I'm clenching. That's contraction, right? And so instead what I did was I just opened the palms of my hands like this, like this. Well, you know what? You really can't be tense if you're opening the palms of your hand. And so for the rest of the appointment, I just stayed like that. And I was super, super relaxed. So that's just something if you're feeling a little tense over something, is to just open your hands out like that and the palms of your hands open. Rule number three, stay aware of your thoughts. 
I don't think many of you would have that problem, would you? At all? No? <laughs> um, the more aware you can be of your thoughts, the less you're empowering negative thoughts. So it really comes down to your awareness. And it doesn't matter, look, if you go down a rabbit hole with a whole lot of thoughts in your head. And, and what matters is that you realize, oh my gosh, I went down a rabbit hole with all those thoughts. Because every time you can see that you followed thoughts is you're weakening those thoughts and you're, you're weakening the grip of the mind on you to, to kind of hypnotize you. It's a feeling of like being hypnotized, isn't it? When the thoughts are just constantly, constantly going in your head. So the more you beca can become aware of your thoughts, the less you empower them and the freer you will become. And you get to a point where you are completely aware all of the time and then your mind is in the background and thoughts just don't bother you. And instead you use your mind for what it was meant for and what was it meant for? It was meant to, um, it was meant to create whatever you want in this world. That's what the mind's for. Rule number four, overcome pain. You have to see the pain gone in your mind to manifest it in the world. So just imagine what it would be like to be free of all painful sensations and the other thing is you're also identifying with depression because you said, I am chronically depressed. Well, you know, the real you is not chronically depressed, but there is the energy of depression in your body at the moment. So if you can, if you can, and this is just a suggestion, just an invitation, if you can instead say that the energy of depression is passing through this body, okay, if you have to say anything, I'm just trying to encourage you not to label yourself with anything you don't want. And that goes for all of us. Look, sometimes I'll find myself doing it, giving myself a label. I'm like, what? Why would I say that? Why would I say that? Why would I stick that to me? So don't, oh, I just got this incredible image of sticking all labels of everything we want we want over us, right? Like happiness, joy, intelligence, um, clarity, beauty. Oh, I just got this wonderful image of that. Um, you are so powerful that you will keep yourself in the place that you are identified with or that you are declaring that you are, okay? So you can be free of your current situation, but you have to see it in your mind first. And then you will attract the circumstances that set you free. The person continues on and this letter, I just, I just feel helps me to say a whole lot of things to people out there that are suffering in pain, okay? So no matter what, or, or suffering with depression or any kind of physical or mental or emotional difficulty that they might be facing, the person continues um, I'm exhausted from fighting to even try to have a bit of a life. My pain is incurable. My depression getting to the highest level. And so these words are really powerful. And there's nothing incurable. In my world, there is nothing incurable. I will not accept that. I know that the universe has infinite ways of freeing you from this situation, infinite. There have been so many miracles that have happened and, and something can happen for you too. So if you can just focus on the solution and not on the problem, and I know it's not easy, but to be free, that's what you need to do. That's what you've got to do. There are infinite ways you can be free of the pain. I don't care what anybody says. And so, and you can have a great life. Um, even if you, you say it was a car accident, even if you refer to memory and go back and remember what it was like before you had the car accident and just use memory 
to to just uh, because for the law of attraction or for the for the spiritual laws there there's no time and so those laws don't know if you are thinking of something in the past or if it is something in the future or it's all now for the spiritual laws so just see yourself use memory and just see yourself before you had the accident how you felt and i really hope that that has helped you a lot and anybody else that might be suffering in that way. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free there's a link in the description below go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business i'll see you there rule number five focus on what you want i wanted to say this and i talk about it in the secret and we have been so orientated toward action that we that was one of the beliefs remember that i said that we have to do something to get something because you can't get anything for nothing so you definitely don't have to take action. That is a world belief. It really is. It's a world belief. Um, so I just want you to know that your focus of what you want is more, more, is stronger and more powerful than any action you could ever take. If you stay focused for one minute on something you want, honestly, it's like 10 years of action. So understand the incredible mental power that you have to bring about what you want in the world. Every single thing you do in life is following a thought. You can't do anything without having the thought, first of all, to do it. And so thought always precedes everything else. And so, and so if, and so in a nutshell, thought is more powerful than any action you can ever take. And that should help you in your life to just remember that. Rule number six, live a life of purpose. First of all, I want you to know, and I just offer this to you, that your purpose and everyone's ultimate purpose is to realize who you really are. Um, and after that, life will place you exactly where you are meant to be. And you will be living your purpose without you having to have done anything, anything. And, it, and that could be a life of giving and service. Um, I know that for me, doing these lives just means everything to me to connect with everybody. I never imagined that this is what I would be doing, but I was just, I felt so inspired to do, to do these. And, um, and so your purpose, when you can be free, you, life will take you there. It really will. Um, and you will have a life that is full of joy and your life will become crystal clear to you. So let me just look back at the question again. Um, your ultimate purpose is to realize who you are and then, and then you will, once you realize that, you will not have to do anything. You will be put in exactly the place that you need to be put in. And do you know what? When you talk about a life of service, if you know who you really are, you are having the greatest effect on the world beyond anything you could ever, ever imagine. Because you are emitting all love and all positivity and all joy and happiness, and we are all connected. And all of that is reaching everybody across the planet. So when you have realized who you are, then your purpose just by your very existence will be uplifting everybody else on the planet. Rule number seven, leave your mistakes behind. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone. That's life. We all make mistakes. Some of us make bigger ones. Some of us make smaller ones, but we all make mistakes. Don't let your mistakes define who you are 
and don't focus on them. Leave them behind in the past because if you're looking at mistakes, what you're doing is you're just regurgitating memory through the mind. You're basically reliving a mistake over and over and over when it's something that happened in the past and it's done with. It's gone and it's done with. You're the only one that can continue to perpetuate it through here, you know, just by thinking back and focusing on it. So leave leave it behind. Let it be gone. Let it be something that's dead and gone and buried and just move on. Just let it go. Let it go. And if the mind throws up, throws up those things again, then just don't believe those thoughts. Just, just say, I'm not interested. If you don't energize a memory, it'll disappear. Doesn't matter how traumatic it is. If you don't energize it, it will completely, completely disappear. Um, I, and one thing you could do if you wanted to do this, it's like create like a ceremony. If you feel I can't just let it go just like that, then you could write out on a piece of paper, mistake, I hope you don't <laughs> write out too many, but write out on a piece of paper your mistakes and you can have like a ceremony of then burning that piece of paper, right? Or throwing that piece of paper in the trash, tearing it up into little pieces and then throwing it in the trash so that you know that so that you really feel that you're letting go of it. Please don't define yourself by mistakes. They are not who you are. They're not who you are. You know, you're perfect. You are perfect. And in, in this experience of the world, we have imperfections. It's fine. It's fine. So what? You know, just move on. Rule number eight, visualize fully. Hi, Rhonda. Whenever I want to manifest something, I will be giving that thing my attention. That's right. You will. <laughs> I get to see glimpses of the things that I want to manifest after thinking about them, but they're just glimpses. They've never truly manifested. So I guess if I want to manifest anything, I have to think about them with the feeling that it's already in my possession. If not, they will just be glimpses and not manifest. Am I right on this? And this is from Id Idham from Singapore. Yes, you are right in that you need to feel as though you have your manifestation in your possession, for sure. I mean, sometimes it's possible to just think something and it manifests too. But if it's something we really want, we kind of need to pull in all of our power, right? We need to bring in feelings as well and really kind of get behind it and, and sort of supercharge it. Um, but I want to just say with glimpses, because I know what you mean by glimpses, but you, if you want, you can interpret glimpses as a sign of land that your manifestation is about to arrive, right? And you know a sign of land like sailors when they're out on the ocean and, and a sign of land would be seeing twigs on top of the water or something like that or seeing some birds flying overhead. They would be signs of land. They know land is close by. And so I would always use glimpses as a sign of land and I would be like, oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's about to arrive. And so maybe that will help you. Um, maybe that will help you if you see glimpses as, as a sign that your manifestation is about to arrive. Number nine, rediscover your confidence. Here's the amazing thing. You never lose your power, ever. It's impossible. You can't lose it. But you can create or attract the experience of not having power. That's the re that's how powerful you are. You are so powerful that you can create not being powerful at all. And so you are powerful. You're attracting every single second of your life, not just the things that you want. You're attracting some things that you don't want to. So um, probably the best thing to do, if you remember when you started, you probably started with something small. If you're feeling you're not attracting things, just go back and choose something small because you don't have a lot of resistance around something small. Like if I say to you, attract a cup of coffee today, 
in your body, you will feel, oh, yeah, I can do that, I can do that. Whereas if I say to you attract $10,000 today, you'll be like, you'll have resistance. So choose small things and that will rebuild your confidence. But let me tell you, you are all the power there is. And so whatever you say goes, even if you're saying, I'm not powerful and I've lost it. So hope that helps for anybody that might be kind of feeling a little shaky about manifestation and rule number 10 the last one before some very special bonus clips is practice positive affirmations affirmations say them every day or every second day depending on how quickly you want to change life you can say them at night just before you go to sleep or you can say them in the morning and you know what you can say them mentally or you can say them out loud sometimes it's good to feel try and feel yourself which feels the most powerful for you to saying them mentally or saying them out loud. I mean, I tend to say them mentally, but if you are saying them mentally, watch that the mind doesn't just like skip over them. Watch that you really, really like giving them a good emphasis. But I mean, I, I still do affirmations. I do health affirmations. I do all kinds of affirmations. And, um, and so they, they're just great, you know, it's, it's just a great thing to do. I want you to know that there's not really any difference between you walking around in this world here. This is for law of attraction. No difference to that or you imagining in your mind. There's no difference. It doesn't know any difference between the two. So if you're if you're visualizing it, law of attraction for law of attraction, this is something that you you already have. And and so if you're not really believing it, it it just kind of means you need to do it some more right and um and and try and come up with some scenarios that are really believable to you like one of the things I would always do to manifest and I don't know why it just worked for me I defaulted to this I would I would imagine I would imagine telling somebody what I had manifested that it had already manifested so I would imagine those phone calls I would imagine talking to a friend I would imagine people saying you know saying to me wow how did you get that where did you get that so that was really believable to me but if because if you really want something then you're going to want to share it with family and friends and and so that really worked incredibly well for me so maybe that might work for you give that a try doubt is comes from the mind and they're just thoughts and and they're, the reason that they're appearing is because you have a belief that is saying that you don't have this already. But just don't give those doubts any, any energy and work harder on feeling that you have your manifestation because when you believe you have your manifestation, no thoughts of doubt will come. When you believe you have it, you have overridden any other belief in the subconscious mind. You've reprogrammed your subconscious and then it will manifest. So just remind yourself that you are the power that creates everything effortlessly, effortlessly. You are that power. So so just take it. It's not, it's not an effort. It's really easy. You know, it's, it's really easy. Just take it easy, let go, of the, let go of the doubtful thoughts. When we reject a negative thought, are we creating resistance? We could be, it depends how you're rejecting it. If you're just, if you're just kind of letting it go and not identifying with it and not believing it, then it's not going to create any resistance. But if you wish it wasn't there, and if you want it to go away and you're all like that about it, then you are creating resistance. And the next part of Leslie's question is, to welcome a negative thought stops resistance. That's true. But are we manifesting that negative thought and letting it into our subconscious by welcoming it? Are we manifesting the negative thought when we welcome a negative thought? So, no, it won't manifest. And the reason it won't manifest is because we're not believing it. Because when we welcome it, we've noticed what it is, we're not believing it, we're not identifying with it, and it won't manifest. Thoughts only manifest when we believe them, when we identify with them. So welcoming not only releases the negative thought, 
it takes a whole lot of negative thoughts out of the subconscious mind with it. So, I mean, it's all, it's a really incredible, my teacher would say, it's an automatic self-cleansing mechanism. So all we have to do is just kind of welcome that th negative thought or welcome that negative feeling, and it's basically cleaning out everything. And as it does, you get lighter, your life becomes spectacular, you become so happy, nothing bothers you anymore. You don't even understand what the word problems means. It's some alien word that other people must experience, but you don't see a problem with anything anywhere. And life is just incredible and your body feels amazing. So um, so it's worth it, yeah, it's worth it. But you are not going to manifest that thought um, when you are welcoming it. How do we break that? negative thought pattern right so so you i mean the mind is like a computer program so and and the fact that it's on a negative loop is because we programmed it on a negative loop but but you know we could have been influenced when we were children and things like that so um so it, one of the things that the mind loves is loves repetition i mean it loves it you know, if you really watch your thoughts, this is the same old thoughts over and over again, you know, it's just kind of dishing up the same old thing. So it loves repetition. So the way you can override a program is to put in the opposite, you know, and when you start out, you know, you feel like you're lying, you know, you'll say something like, you know, you might be really broke. Gee, I was when I was making the secret. So um, you, you might not have any money and you're trying to instill, you know, wealth and prosperity and riches and every time you say it, you feel a contraction in your body because you know you don't have it. But, you know, truly because I did it myself, after a while you change it, you, re you really begin to change it and you don't quite have that contraction anymore. And then you start to see money coming in, you know, in, in different ways. Um, and, and, it, and, and, or you can be given things that you were going to buy and now you don't have to buy it. Or so you begin to see, you start to see signs of land, you know, is one of the great, one of the great new thought thought um, writers would say, talk about a sign of land. So you start to see sign of land. Now that's what I did in the secret. You can do gratitude. That will turn everything around. That will make you feel good. That will get you off the negative rant. But those negative thoughts are coming from beliefs held in the subconscious mind, right? That's where, where do the those, beliefs stem from for most of us? They stem mostly from our childhood conditioning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody's, our parents said something to us. We just swallowed it, hook, line, and sinker. You know, we're like, right, that's a belief. And, uh, and so we take it in and, and then we have all these beliefs that, that, uh, and you can hear, you know, if you, if you're talking to somebody, like if, if, if somebody says, Oh, I believe da, 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 or cause we say that all the time. Or somebody says, I think da, 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 behind those two, uh, behind those two statements are going to be a belief. Mm. And so the really interesting thing, they're hard to spot because you believe they're true. <laughs> they seem real, yeah. They seem so you real. don't think, yeah, you don't think they're a belief. You, you think they're real, you know, and so they can be hard to spot. But if you start to listen to yourself, you know, I believe or I think or especially look at the things that you have a really strong opinion about mm. because where you have a really strong opinion is a belief that's underneath that. So, so one of the things that in the latest book is that I show how to um, show how to dissolve those those beliefs, and j just really by some of the things that I've just mentioned, and uh, and and you can dissolve them, and you just feel free every time a belief goes out, you feel completely free. You know, it's an it's amazing, amazing feeling. To, you just feel as light as a feather and actually you feel invincible. I love going with the flow. I really do because I have found that life will present to me manifestations far greater than I could ever imagine with my mind. And so I'm really just these days letting everything go because life does a way better job than me. Um, I can't even think of things that that are more fantastic than what life does. In The Greater Secret, uh, it is explained that there's only three kinds of thoughts and they are comparing, describing and measuring. Every single thought you have 
fits into one of those three categories. And all minds behave this way. All minds are comparing, measuring and describing. Every single one of us. We're not unique, you know. <laughs> We're not unique. We've all, we've all got the same smorgasbord of thoughts to, to, to kind of play with. Um, so, but, but the thing is, it doesn't, with those thoughts, it doesn't matter what the mind does. What matters is that you don't believe those thoughts, right? You just, you just, you don't want to identify with those thoughts and don't believe them. You don't need to control them, be trying to bash them down with a hammer. Go, go. No, you don't have to do any of that. You just need to be observing and witnessing them. And that's the moment that you observe a thought, you are no longer identified with that thought or believing that thought. And it can't manifest. You just like stop manifestation in its tracks for a negative thought. So it's really perfect. Um, the more you observe and don't believe thoughts, the quieter your mind will become. Um, and I talked before about thoughts are not personal. So they, you know, they're just looking for someone to energize them and just say, be on your way. You know, you don't belong here. I'm fabulous. <laughs> I'm the infinite being. <laughs> I don't want any negative, I don't want any negative thoughts. Be on your way. You just have to let go of all the attachments to your desires, okay? When we let go of all our attachments to desires, guess what happens? All our desires manifest because when we don't have attachment to our desires, we don't have resistance. And so I don't know that, I, I, I try to think if I have, if I have many desires anymore, I just love everything, the way life is, just the way it is, even the tricky stuff, even the curly stuff, even the sticky stuff, it's all just kind of fine. But I don't have an attachment to the way it's going to work out because I know that everything is fine. I know we're all safe. I know we're eternal. I know there's no end to any of us. I know we're having an adventure, we're having a human experience and it's interesting at times, isn't it? And it's fantastic at other times. I actually look at the world and I think it's incredible. I really think it's something else. Um, but I don't get so perturbed. I don't get perturbed by all of those things. It's just anymore. And so if you don't have attachment um, to things, then... And life is really, really great, actually. Um, attachments that kind of hurt us. Um, okay, Jill is saying, what do you mean by attachment to your desires? Okay, so attachment is like when I really, really want something and I've really, really got to have it. It's something that you really, really want and I've really got to have it and I want it and I can't be happy until I have it. I just, life isn't going to be good until I have it. That's like an attachment to your desire. Whereas if you were like, um, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice to have a new house? Okay, so here's the difference. I really, really want a new house. I can't stand this house. This house is falling down. This house has a lot of problems. And then on the other side of that is, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice to have a new house? Can you feel the difference? This one has is effortless. It's kind of effortless. Wouldn't it be nice? So you could say that in front of all of you, all of your um, desires. Wouldn't it be nice if I had this? Wouldn't it be nice? And so that you're not kind of attached. Because when you're attached, it's really hard for it to manifest, okay? So in The Greater Secret, I talk about attachment, um, I do a whole section on it and I do it because it's important um, because you can have whatever you want but attachment is something, attachment is, attachment is full of fear, fear that you're not going to have it. Um, uh, you, you can love somebody and then you can be attached that you'll be afraid of losing them. You see, love isn't afraid of anything. Attachment is afraid of losing, losing something. So 
that's kind, that's kind of the difference. But if you if you just say, wouldn't it be nice, you know, then it's like really easy going. I mean, you've got a magic wand. You can create anything you want, but you just got to be really cool about it, right? You got to be, I can do that. I can have that. I can be that. The welcoming practice sounds counterintuitive, that you would welcome something, right, that you don't want. It's like, whoa, hang on a minute. That doesn't make any sense. It does when I explain this to you, is that what when something that we don't want appears, we resist it. And if you remember in the secret, what you resist persists. And so if you're resisting something you don't want, it will never go away. Welcoming is the opposite to resisting. Welcoming stops you from resisting. That's why it's so brilliant. Because resistance is not fab, really. Um, But even that idea of resistance not being fab is something to welcome. That thought is something to welcome. And just welcome that thought and then that thought will completely dissolve instead of building up inside of you and the mind saying, yeah, resistance isn't any good, yeah, you know, the mind adding a whole lot of other thoughts, <laughs> a whole lot of other thoughts. So that's a perfect example of welcoming. Now, what I did just then, because I've welcomed for the last four years, what I did just then, I felt it completely dissolve in my chest, that thought. I, the feeling that was behind that thought just completely dissolved and now that is gone. So it's, it's, it's that easy. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end, and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video. I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. For 10 more amazing rules from Marie Forleo, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. You've got to take responsibility for the energy that you allow in your life. I want you to fend off negativity as much as humanly possible. You know, we know so much more about the brain than we did just 20 years ago. 